I haven't been making very many videos at the moment because I'm extremely busy with other stuff, with animation and with artwork and also with litigation and just getting on with life as well. But I've just come from a post on Twitter in which somebody was bemoaning the absence of a counterculture. They said there was a counterculture in the 60s and the 70s in Ireland. If it's on RTE or the Irish Times, then it's not a counterculture. So I disagree respectfully with the person who said we don't have a counterculture in Ireland today. We have an extremely strong counterculture in Ireland today. If you have that cone-headed cretin, John uh, Williams from RTE, coming out with the, thr the Truth Matters videos to tell people why they shouldn't listen to social media, then that means that we're winning, not losing. But when you're up against psychopaths, they will never tell you that you're winning. They will always gaslight you to the very, very end. They will gaslight you. Oh, you're losing. This is a waste of time. What? Who are you going to call? That's the psychopath thing. This is what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with psychopaths. It's okay because the likes of myself or Thomas Sheridan or many others know what we're dealing with. It's also important to look at this whole thing without an Abrahamic framework. The Abrahamic framework is the one that there's going to be a happy ending and that the Messiah is going to come along and rescue us all. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. There's not going to be a Messiah. Sorry, folks. The other thing about paganism and pagan theology, if such a thing exists, I'd almost call it an oxymoron, pagan theology, is that there are no Ten Commandments. And you see the Wiccans coming out with all this stuff about neo-paganism and all of that. And usually they're just, you know, they're just confused people who have just sw swapped one set of abrahamic labels for another it doesn't work it's not like that you also see it actually on the trufer scene and on the what you could call the alternative scene here in ireland there's one individual part of shall we say the mayo chapter of the free men who comes out with these absolutely wacky posts long rambling word salad about taking on all the judges and the judiciary they're now setting up their own people's court Oh, this has happened and, you know, it, I suppose it was inevitable it was going to come to Ireland. It's happened in Canada. It's happened to all these tribunals that they set up and they're of no significance. People who are not con men or wackadoodles will say, we're going to have a dialogue about what's happening. We're going to have an open discourse. We're going to set up a group to discuss this and we're not looking for your money. If they're looking for your money, keep away. If they're looking for your money, keep away. I even say this as a litigant. And one of the biggest smears that was brought out against me in the Hoth community from 2015 up to quite recently was that I was not able to represent myself. I could only bring my cases with senior counsel and that I was fundraising for that. I think that that one has largely withered away in the Hoth community now, but it was set out. Somebody set that out with an agenda to destroy my credibility as a litigant and what I did instead was I destroyed their credibility as a smear artist these things bounce back in you if you hex yourself that way they bounce back in you it's happened to Imelda May she hexed herself by taking the shill the NGO shilling I was going to say the king's shilling she took the NGO shilling by race baiting for Deirdre Mortel and Deirdre, they set up an NGO for Deirdre called Rethink Ireland because apparently we can't think for ourselves. So Deirdre Mortel and all her cronies are going to rethink. Take a closer look at Deirdre Mortel. Quite, she, she's an NGO pro from an early age. She learnt how to milk that system, Deirdre Mortel did. She has videos telling people how to milk the NGO system. My own agenda in Ireland is the mainstream media, but a very close second if I was going to be distracted is the NGOs. The NGOs cost us conservatively 5 billion euros of taxpayers' uh, money a year, and all they do is incite people how to break the law. So, for example, if you're an illegal immigrant in this country and all your options to remain here have expired, the NGOs drop, drop in, using our taxes to tell you how to break the law. Because somebody who's an illegal immigrant in a country, be it Ireland or the US, is a criminal. We have a criminal code about that. How are they punished? They're deported. Anyway, I've been getting a lot of messages from people. Thank you. Thank you. You must understand something, that I'm not monetized. So in that regard, if you compare me to RTE, who are monetized in two directions at the moment, through the license fee and through advertising, then I'm doing the public service broadcasting that they aren't. I'll never be monetized. And I'll never monetize for my litigation. 
Now, at the moment, as it so happens, I'm bringing particular challenge and I would prefer that to be handled by senior counsel. So I've written to a few senior counsel and solicitors saying you can take this case on for free. I can assure you I'll be paying no money for this other than the stamp duty of the documents, which comes to, you know, 190 quid to start a high court case. But you're going to run this one and you're going to do it for free. Or you're not going to take it. And I only set that out last week. It's still in the early stages. I'm taking a challenge of the fast track planning laws, which basically are a Fine Gael structure for builders to get rich without having to go through any due process. That's what that is. It's a structure for builders to get rich without having to go through any due process. Local authorities, planning departments, and now we just put that to one side, let the builders get rich. It's done under the increasingly spurious guise of a housing shortage. Dublin and Ireland has a shortage of affordable housing for a reason, deliberate government policy. That's the reason. It is deliberate government policy to prevent people from getting on the property ladder and having a secure home over their head. That is deliberate government policy. The notion then of allowing builders to get rich by just railroading planning authorities and precedent and all this kind of thing, that's just a Fine Gael, another Fine Gael thing. Fine Gael is Ireland's equivalent to the Democrats. And a gas like that's happening, and it has been... We're actually seeing it also mirroring in America at the moment where you know, mainstream Republicans are falling in with the Democrats. They'll pay for that the way Micheál Martin and Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil will pay for getting into bed with Fine Gael. There's a very big difference, at least historically, between Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. A very, very, very big difference between Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. Fine Gael created the Irish Free State, which was a British dominion. Fianna Fáil created the Constitution of the Republic of Ireland. Very big difference. It was Fianna Fáil who created the Republic... And they did it through the Constitution. De Valera did that. And then the Republic, ironically, was declared formally in 1949 by Fine Gael because they found themselves in an embarrassing position. Fine Gael are our equivalent of the Democrats. They're evil. Fine Gael is an evil, in, an evil entity. Um, you cannot worry about other people. You cannot worry about mask wearers or that kind of thing. But getting back to the issue of a counterculture... A counterculture is, by its definition, not mainstream. So we have a counterculture out here through numerous things. One of them is memes, because memes are very, very powerful. Another one is Twitter. Why do you think they closed down Trump? Didn't do that for fun. Memes and Twitter and YouTube videos, that kind of thing. But you're part of the counterculture if you're not wearing a mask when you go out to buy a pint of milk. That's all. If you do nothing else, you're part of the counterculture. You're doing enough. The mask thing has been minimised by the mainstream media in the same way that they have minimised the very fundamental distinction between Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. Those Fianna Fáilers who've got in with Fine Gael are going to end up like those Republicans who've got in with the Democrats and who sided against Trump. The long-term trajectory is bleak for them. Um... Imelda May sold out by doing a race baiting promotion in which Deirdre Mortel wasted 500,000 euros of taxpayers' money. Everything with these people is taxpayers' money. If the taxpayers' money dried up, see how charitable they'd be. They wouldn't cross the street. They'd cross the street before helping somebody in trouble. The likes of Deirdre Mortel or all those NGO ones. But Deirdre Mortel whittled away uh, 500,000 euros of taxpayers' money on race baiting. And the race baiting was signs around the cities of Ireland. You don't get to be racist and Irish. And Imelda May promoted it and has paid a big price for that ever since. Has paid a big, big price for that ever since. Hats off to Thomas Sheridan. He promoted that she would. He, sorry, predicted that she would. Nice one, Thomas. Thomas was ahead of us all with that one. I mean, I didn't like what I saw with it, but I didn't think it would backfire as badly as it has on Imelda May. You know, this prissy wannabe Dublin 4 girl lecturing us all about how, how bold and evil we are. I did a video. I did a video about Imelda May and YouTube took it down after about five days because RTE complained. Ostensibly, RTE complained ostensibly on the grounds of copyright. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. They complained that they just didn't want that up because it was just a little bit too close to the bone for them. 
I should put it on. I haven't got a bit shoot, but I should put it on bit shoot. I should put it on bit shoot. <clears throat> but a counterculture, by its definition, is eclectic and it's anarchic. If it wasn't eclectic and anarchic, it wouldn't be a counterculture. So the idea that, I mean, people are saying, well, we don't have a counterculture here. No, we don't see it reflected in the Irish Times or RTE. They are the litmus test. If you're on RTE, your establishment. I've been on RTE. I was interviewed by Joe Duffy. You know, but that doesn't mean... Uh, oof, does that make me establishment that I was interviewed by Joe Duffy? Possibly in the context in which I was interviewed. I don't know. I had sued McDonald's and lost. I appealed it to the High Court and lost again. Um, does that make me counterculture? Well, it's interesting to see what RTE don't say about me or the stuff that I put up on Twitter and on Facebook and on YouTube when I'm not doing 60 days in Facebook jail. I don't believe in anything more than two genders. There, I've said it. For a while I was reluctant to say it, but I don't believe in anything more than two genders. And gender is determined at conception. I believe that there are people who have very serious confusion in relation to their gender identity. I don't believe anybody should have violence incited against them or hatred incited against them. But it doesn't mean I'm going to agree. Sorry, guys, I'm going, you know, I will exercise my right not just to disagree, but to say I disagree and to say the terms on which I disagree. Many of the people who are promoting the transgender agenda are also the ones who are now saying, trust the science in relation to wearing a mask. Well, all the science is against the transgender agenda. You know, the science is that um, your gender is determined at conception. Not at birth, at conception. And one of the things that the science actually upholds is that if there's a plane crash and everybody is cremated, incinerated in a plane crash, they try and identify the victims. And they identified them through any bits and pieces they can find that are that they pull out the ashes. More often than not, it's teeth and perhaps bone fragments. And when they identify the bone fragments and the teeth, they say the DNA is of a male or is of a female. So science that. 